In this video, I'm going to share my approach to lighting for a short film. I'll break down some of my favorite scenes and with it, share some creative techniques that you can try out in your next film. First, let's get the gear out of the way. For this shoot, I used two cameras, the Sony FX3 and the Sony A7S III. Lens-wise, I shot everything on a set of DZO Vespit Primes, except for some shots of the pilot in flight, filmed by my friend Lo Lemmer on the 24-70mm F2.8G Master. We flew at the same time, with me filming from a second helicopter. A truly exhilarating experience. Both my rigs were small rig, and for the gimbal shots, I used the DJI RS3 Pro. For focus, I used the small rig Magic Fist paired with the DJI transmission, except for the heli shots. I actually used the LiDAR rangefinder with the DJI focus motor in autofocus. Lighting wise, Nanlite sent me the new Forza 500 Mark II, both the monocolor and bicolor versions. To say that this light has been upgraded is an understatement, but more about that later. Let's jump into the setup, the nighttime study scene. Believe it or not, this was shot in daytime. We chose this location because it doesn't get as much light in the morning and it was easier to emulate night during daytime without going crazy with flags. In this case, we simply closed the blockout curtains and for our cool night light, we used the Forza 500 monocolor with a CTB gel. To compete with the natural light, we had to shoot at 100% to bleed through. Another reason a powerful light is important. The gel is put on to cool down the light enough so that we can play with color contrast between orange and blue. And for warmth, we only used a Nanlite bulb in this lamp as a practical, set to 2700 Kelvin. I love these bulbs because they can be controlled through the Nanlink app, so dialing in the right intensity and temperature is quick and easy. These two lights alone already transformed the scene because the bulb had this nice reflection against the wall and door, creating more warmth. For the flashing TV behind our subject, I just used the PowerTube 30X set to TVFX mode, and this just helped boost the overall ambience in the room. Although we didn't need any light to shoot the helicopter flying, we did need some light for the startup scenes. Since we were filming at a working airport with airplanes and helicopters coming in all the time, we weren't allowed to use any light modifiers, like a reflector or scrims. So our only option was a portable strong light to motivate the sunlight from a direction more fitting to each scene. The sun came straight from behind, so the inside of the heli felt pretty flat. To create just a bit of depth, we took a Forza 500 Mach 2 powered by VLOX in a backpack and added that extra contrast on the arm from highlight to shadow. Same for the close-up of Barry looking up. The light creates the stronger patch on the left and in the wider shots we've already established that the sun is coming from behind, so it just feels right. The head leads on the Mark IIs received a massive upgrade with new ports to match the premium build quality. The ballast is even smaller and included is a nifty new clamp. Arguably one of my favorite scenes was faking this knockdown shot. The lighting was super simple yet effective. We chose this location because of the natural light that comes in from one side and we could easily motivate it with a softbox. I used the Forza 500 Mark II with a 120 softbox and grid. To spice up the scene just a bit, I added some cooler power tubes in the background because they reflected nicely on the floor and with some haze just had a flattering glow to them. Most of the film's sound was captured on location by a Foley artist, which adds a great sense of realism to these scenes. Big ups to Henny Gissing for standing in as an extra to fake the knockout. Henny is also the writer of the script and assisted me with directing some of the performances, which turned out to be super valuable. One of my favorite features of the Mark IIs is the ability to adjust green and magenta. This not only comes with new creative opportunities to light, but it's especially helpful in matching the exact color with ambient light or additional lights used together. This can best be illustrated in the bathroom scene. We use this small window as a key light with a 500 bi color on the outside shooting through a softbox. The contrast here was too intense, so to bring up the room ambience, we took the 500 monocolor on a projector attachment and shot it against the ceiling to bounce from the same direction as the key light, not only acting as a fill, but also bringing up the overall ambience in the room. The problem, however, is the fact that the bathroom tiles have this pinkish tint to them, creating a serious amount of magenta in the scene. Although I immediately saw it with my eyes, using a color meter confirmed that it leans too much to magenta. With Barry's skin tone already leaning more towards red, the ability to dial the light to the green side immediately solves this problem. The new versions of Forza 500 is also fully compatible with the Nanlink app, so I could easily guide my gaffer to the right spot. 
This technique of bouncing with the projector attachment is incredibly helpful in tight spaces because you can motivate your key light without actually putting a light there. You can use a reflector or a silk for more accurate color, but with the green and magenta setting, it's just that much easier to dial in the light. I used this same setup in the kitchen during the daytime scene. The space is incredibly tight and the only place we could put our full light was just out of frame on the opposite side, bouncing back. We filmed the night scene straight after once the sun went down. Here we changed it up with some more color contrast. First we had a 500 bi color outside with a CTB gel to emulate cool evening light. The warm light in the back room was created with two small power tube 6Cs set to 2700 Kelvin. For some balanced light in the middle, we put a longer 30x power tube at 5600 Kelvin as a top light. I wanted to change the night angle a bit from the one we shot in daytime. So I put on a 50mm and stood back a bit further. And here you get this nice contrast between cool, neutral, warm, bright and dark. I kept the sides dark to motivate the feeling of loneliness. Straight after this, we went into the street scene. I wanted to keep the same cool and warm tones from the previous kitchen shot, so we needed a street with warm lights to contrast against the night sky. Turns out 5800 ISO was just the right balance. To get some more definition on Barry, we used the 500 bi color from across the street powered by v -Locks. That's the rim you see over here, but we still needed a bit of subtle fill, so at such a high ISO, a power tube at the same Kelvin at low intensity did the trick. Moving on to the test scene. As always, we start with lighting the wide so that we can adjust the close-ups for more consistency. The hanger has this natural diffusion coming from the right, but it's not powerful enough to create definition. Here I used three lights. First a 500 monocolor on the outside to boost the overall ambience in the hanger from one side. Second, I had a 500 Mach 1 on the projector attachment inside, out of frame to create a streak of light on the floor with some hot patches on Barry almost as if a window is open and the direct light is coming in. Then for a final touch, a fill light from the same side to motivate the key light. And this was on a 150 softbox, just out of frame, also on a 500 bi color. Moving into the close-ups, the direct light from the projector attachment created this nice flare in camera. And the checkerboard is also visible with bright dark, bright dark. I want to take this moment to thank the entire team involved in making this. From sounds to shops to the hard graft of setting up lights, this would not be possible without this group of talented and hardworking individuals. Make sure you check out the full credits in the description below. And that's it. As always, comments drop them below and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.